Hello and welcome to the 6-1 video. Before we begin the notes for this lesson, I want to do a quick warm-up um, just to get your brains going as we start this chapter. We're going to be dealing a lot with polygons, so take just a second and pause this video and see if you can come up with the names for these polygons that are listed here. Okay, so hopefully you've paused the video, you've gone through and named as many of these polygons as you possibly can. We're going to go through right now and talk about the names for these. If I have a polygon with three sides, it's called a triangle. If I have a polygon with four sides, it's called a quadrilateral. If you have square or rectangle, you're absolutely correct. However, those have a special name. They're all quadrilaterals. We have a lot of different types of quadrilaterals, and we're going to be looking at those in this in this chapter. Five sides is called a pentagon, just like the building, the uh, political building, the pentagon. Six sides is a hexagon. Seven sides is a heptagon. Eight sides, like an octopus, we have an octagon. Nine sides is called a nonagon. And ten, si ten sides is a decagon. Kind of like a decade is ten years. Now we also have names for different polygons above ten sides. For example, um, a 12-sided polygon is a dodecagon. However, for this chapter, if we have more than 10 sides, we're just going to call it an n-gon. For example, 11 sides is an 11-gon. 15 sides is a 15-gon. 20 sides is a 20-gon. And we're literally just going to write that number and then put gon. Okay, so here's our learning objectives for section 6.1, Polygon Angle Sum Theorem. We have four different objectives here, as you can see. Make sure that when I give these to you in class, you go back through and you scale yourselves accordingly. First one is you can find the sum of interior angle measures. Second is you can find the measure of each interior angle. So not just all of the interior angles, but getting it down to just one of them. Third is you can use the polygon angle sum theorem to find requested values. So that means you're getting into like algebra. And then the last one is I can find measures of an exterior angle. So we're going to be looking at interior angles and exterior angles. So before we get started, we need to know a little bit of vocabulary. We have three vocabulary words here. We've got equilateral polygon, which is our first one. And that means a polygon with all sides equal. Equilateral is equal. We've already talked about that. So now an equilateral polygon is a polygon with all equal sides. Equiangular, similarly, if I have an equiangular polygon, I have a polygon with all angles equal. And our last word is regular polygon. A regular polygon is a polygon which is both equilateral and equiangular. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is the polygon angle sum theorem and what it tells us. What it tells us is the sum of the interior angles of an n-gon is n minus 2 times 180. n minus 2 times 180 is so important for us to remember. So if I go through an example with you, if I'm asked to find the sum of the interior angles of a hexagon, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my formula and plug in n. So in this case, n, oh that's really hard to see, let's see here. In this case, n is going to be, well let's see, a hexagon is 6. That's my number of sides. So 
So I'm going to plug in my number of sides, which is 6, into that formula. So I get 6 minus 2 times 180, which is 4 times 180. I'm going to bust out my handy dandy calculator here. So I ask my calculator, hey calculator, what is 4 times 180? Oops, that's not right. 4 times 180, and I get 720. So I know that inside of a hexagon, all of my angles will have to add to 720 degrees. So now I've got two problems that I would like you to try, and I'm going to move on to the next set of problems. So we've also got this corollary to that theorem. And what that says is the measure of each interior angle of a regular n-gon is n minus 2 times 180 over n. So now let's talk about a few very important things. Each interior angle, so just one of them, not all of them. We just found what all of them must be. That was this part, n minus 2 times 180. Now I'm looking for one of those angles. So I'm going to divide by the number of sides that I have, which is also the number of angles. Now what's very important is I must have a regular n-gon. That is very important to me. Because if my polygon is not regular, meaning it's equilateral and equiangular, then I can't find the sum of one angle because they might all be different. But if I do have an an, a regular polygon, then all of my angles will be the same and I can just divide whatever my total is by the number of angles. Okay, so for my first example, if I'm looking at an octagon, I have my formula. So again, I'm going to plug in 8 for n because, again, that's my number of sides. So I plug in 8, I get 8 minus 2 times 180. That would tell me all of my angles, but I want just one of them. So I'm going to divide that by 8. So 8 minus 2, I get 6. 6 times 180 divided by 8. So again, I'm going to use my calculator to help me out. Mm -hmm. 6 times 180 equals, divided by 8 equals, my answer is 135 degrees. So each of my eight angles within that octagon, each one is going to measure 135 degrees. So now I've got one for you to try. Go ahead and try that problem in your notes. Be ready to show it to me in class. And I'm going to move on to the next slide. So here we have another theorem, and it's called the polygon exterior angle sum theorem. So before we were talking about interior angles, which if you look at these two examples would be any of the angles inside of your polygon, because interior means inside. Now though, we're talking about exterior angles. So an exterior angle is created by extending one of your sides. And we've talked about this in triangles so far. We talked about triangle exterior angle theorem. Okay, but we can do this with any polygon. So if I extend any one of my sides, I create an exterior angle. So what I know about exterior angles of a polygon is that the sum of all exterior angles is 360 degrees. The sum of all of my exterior angles is 360 degrees. Now, I also know that my number of sides is going to be the same as my number of exterior angles. So if I have five sides in this first example, then I've got five exterior angles. If I have seven sides, like in this second example, then I have seven exterior angles. Now, I've also got two different equations that we can pull from this. My first equation is if I want to find the measure of an exterior angle. In order to find the measure of an exterior angle, I take 360, because that has to be the total, 
and I divide it by my number of sides. Because remember, if I have seven sides, I have seven angles. If I have five sides, I have five angles. So 360 divided by the number of sides gives me the measure of the exterior angle. However, if I just flip these two things, then my equation is 360 divided by the measure of each exterior angle equals my number of sides. So I have two equations there from that one theorem. 360 divided by n is my measure of my exterior angle, and 360 divided by my exterior angle is my number of sides. So we're going to look at two examples here. I'm going to move this up just a little bit so we have some more space. The first example, oh actually I'm just going to do one and then you're going to do it, you try. Find the value of an exterior angle for figure one above. So figure one is this picture here. I have five sides, I have five exterior angles. If I'm looking for the value of an exterior angle, I need to use 360 divided by n. So I've got 360 degrees divided by my number of sides, which in figure one is five. So again, I have to check with my calculator. Calculator 360 divided by five. That gives me 72 degrees. So I know that each of my exterior angles, like this angle here, is 72 degrees. That angle there, 72 degrees. That one there. All of my exterior angles are 72 degrees. Now, if we would have gone the other way and they said, oh hey, just so you know, the exterior angle of your polygon is 72 degrees. We want to know how many sides it has. Well, you would just do the same thing. You'd say, okay, calculator 360 divided by 72. It spits out 5. So it tells you, oh, you have a 5-sided polygon. So what I would like you to do here is this, oopsies, this last you try problem. It says find the value of the exterior angle for figure 2 above. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a problem that's going to include a little bit of algebra. So we know how to find the total of all of our interior angles in a polygon. It was n minus 2 times 180. So let's write that down. Let's remind ourselves. n minus 2 times 180. That gives you the sum of your interior angles. So if I'm looking at this picture here, this first example, I need to find the value of x. I've got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pentagon here. So if I plug this into my equation, I've got 5 minus 2 times 180. 5 minus 2 I know is 3. If I multiply 3 times 180, Let's ask our calculator, 3 times 180, I get 540 degrees. So I know that all of these angles, if I add them all up, will give me 540 degrees. So let's give ourselves a little bit more space to do this problem. Because what I need to do is I need to add up all of those things. I'm going to use red because that's what my values are giving to me in. I'm going to start with, say, this angle here, and I'm just going to start adding. 4x minus 10 plus, next one, 5x plus 5 plus, 4x minus 10 plus, 4x plus 15 plus 4x plus 15. So I'm going to add up all of those things. That means a lot of like terms here. So let's go through, I'm going to add up 4x and 5x and 4x and 4x and 4x. That gives me 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 4 is 13, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21x. So I've got 21x, now I have to go back, negative 10 plus 5 gives me negative 5, minus 10, negative 15. 
plus 15, zero. And plus another 15, I end up with a total of plus 15. So I know that 21x plus 15 has to equal 540 degrees. So now I can go through and I can actually solve this. I'm going to subtract my 15, subtract my 15. 21x equals 525. Divide by 21, divide by 21. Need our calculator again. Calculators are going to be really helpful for this chapter. 525 divided by 21 equals x equals 25. We'll just put that right here. x equals 25. So again, reminder, I know that these are all of my interior angles, so I used my formula to find what my sum would be. My sum has to be 540. So then I just summed everything together, combined like terms, and solved to get x equals 25. So you've got your one last you try problem there. And that's all for this video, and I will see you in class on Monday. Have a great weekend.